The next speaker is Professor Zhuo Zhuang. I hope I didn't pronounce it too badly. He's professor at Tsinghua University in Beijing. He got his PhD in Europe at the University College Dublin and then moved back to China. And he's the president of the Computational Mechanics Committee of the Chinese Mechanics Association. He has uh, uh, spanned uh, some interests in uh, many interests in computational mechanics, including especially fracture mechanics, extended finite element methods, and multi scale based computation of uh, crystal plasticity, which is the topic of his uh, presentation. So, please. Uh, thanks, Chairman, for the introduction, and also thanks to Professor O'Neill for giving me a chance to uh, join this conference and give a preliminary talk. We talk about going to the computation mechanics uh, for the dislocation-based crystal plasticity at make scale. Uh, my colleague is Zhang Li Liu. He was postdoctor working in Northwestern for Teddy Black School, and also my student in entry at the moment. He's postdoctor working in uh, UCLA. <laughs> crystal plasticity at make pillars a very interesting uh, recent uh, ten years. For the, compre- uh, for the compression work, for the pillars. For the pillar compression, they have, the, they have no strength gradient, but they have size effect because the size is smaller. And during the compression, we can see the size effect during smaller is harder. But what uh, methodology, what a theoretical solution can be solved this problem? But we can, if we use the Continue use the thread gradient plasticity, but they have not had a lot be used now. And we need to give the new models. So we think about how to use the uh, new model, a new competition model, and the theoretical model for the, to explain and uh, experiment the date. And the, 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 the first work is the, the, the pillar during the comparison, they have three boundaries. And the, the, the third one is the coating the pillar. We have the coating on the pillar surface. This location couldn't uh, escape from the free surface. And next, we're talking about the psycholo- uh, psychological loading during the, uh, during the uh, tension. We, we try to find the dislocation starvation during the loading and unloading process. The first is talking about the dislocation based uh, director continuum mechanics model for crystal plasticity. For dislocation dynamics, we have the equation for, dis- for dislocations. This is a balance equation. This is false. This is velocity of dislocation. This is coefficient of the uh, coefficient. And from this dislocation move, we have the force to drive dislocation move. During this long move, or dislocation will be rotation. For the lattice, uh, lattice will be rotation during the uh, drive, the de- uh, finite, deform- finite deformation. And then we use the plastic strain. This is the uh, deformation right. This is the rotation right. Looks like uh, 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 Cauchy stress with Yomer right. This is the special use of the dislocation dynamics. And then we also have the topology evaluation. This are in, for the internal crystal, we have the modified and updated the dislocation uh, uh, topology. And for the free surface, we also have the uh, topology for free surface in our competition models. So we can use uh, coupling method from the uh, crystal plasticity, uh, uh, plasticity for coupling method for this for the dis- uh, dislocation dynamics model to the finite model. From dislocation dynamics, we calculate the a plastic strain, because this, if this lot move, they have they have move, they have a plastic strain, and uh, this plastic strain transfer to the Gauss point of finite element, and uh, at the Gauss po- ga- on the Gauss point we calculate the stress, and this stress uh, went back go back to the uh, uh, DDD model for this location move, this or lo- this location rotations. This coupling method also. We have a displacement at the, at the dislocation models. They have two separate two parts. One part from the dislocation evaluation, another part for finite element for finite deformation from a finite element. We use to transfer the, the deform, deformation to the from node of the finite element to the 
lattice node of this uh, the crystal in dislocation models. We have this coupling method. We have used continue use the equation of motion and calculate that, and also we transferred uh, deformation and the stress and strain between dislocations and uh, models and the finite models from this crate to continuous. From, from the light, there are two parts of work for these rotation models. One is the lattice rotations. If the, if the finite, uh, finite deformation, we, the lattice of this location should rotation. We have dislocation of lattice. Also, we have the surface dislocation. We consider two parts in the dislocation model. We can give the uh, displacement at the dislocation dynamics. For the edge dislocation, lean, uh, we have this example uh, for the uh, lean, uh, lean, uh, give the edge dislocation mo motion. This example with this uh, one um, burst vector to move from the uh, edge dislocation motion, and the, th this size is the 40 me 40 micro to make the 40 micro to 40 micro. This is almost the um, cubic size, and. The, for the pillars during compression, this have the pinpoint. We have the single arm dislocation rotation, and the one box vector is 0 0.25 nanometers. If rotation 1,000 times, they have be uh, they have be displacement almost the 250 nanometers. For the horizontal uh, for the horizontal motion, they are almost 0.0.15 uh, micros. So this, from the, our simulation, uh, a theoretical, uh, theoretical work, also this from experiment, it looks like, uh, uh, like consistent. Next, I move to the single arm dislocation soils control plastic, plastic, uh, plastic flow in uh, uh, FCC MAC pillars. For the general initialization configuration, we can, we can put the, all, of the, all of the different densities in the in the pillars, and then we have stress relaxation process. And during the compression, most of these locations density will be reduced. Will be reduced. The the reason is these locations will escape from free boundaries. When the this density reduced, the the stress stress strain curve will be increased. If all these locations dis disappear in the pillars, the the Plastic go back to the elastic. The pillar go back to perfect crystal because no dislocations. This means starvation of dislocation because these are very small pillar. They have the starvation the mechanisms. We have two models of branton reed models. They are two pinning point because if the the sample size is large, the the <coughs> the, uh, the dislocation evaluation. Follow the two pin uh, rotated for the two pin point, but the not dislocation move out of the samples. If the sample is smaller, the the dislocation lines will be very close to the free surface. The shorter in the force will drive dislocation line escape from surface. There are two pin point will be broken. Only one pin point left because this one point we call the single arm dislocation size. For the smaller pillars, most single arm dislocation evaluated, dominated the deformation. This the animation of the, the dislocation line escape from free boundary during compression, or this the this blue line is the dislocation density reduced during the compression. This the so this black line is the strain strain curve, because some dislocations will be move. Uh, Escape from free boundaries, the density will be reduced. But you, and the stable values, since this dislocation still keeps stable values, means some dis new dislocations will be nucleated. New, dis new dislocations nucleated. Some dislocations escape, keep the balance. So we can stable hardening curve. Also, we can stable density curve. This means the the new dislocation and the uh, escape dislocation density almost keep uh, constant. We have uh, different uh, side of pillars. 
this pile is 200 nanometers, 400 nanometer, and until 800 nanometers. But uh, the, the thin line is the dislocation density values and curve. For the thin line is the uh, strain, uh, stress strain curve. Almost the same uh, configurations. We can compare the results with, with experiment for the nanopilers, for the uh, nanopilers, and they almost have the same uh, configuration. For the comp during the comparison, we have the, give the example, we have 200 nanometer of diameter of pillars as an example. During the comparison, some dislocation densities will be reduced since this, this dislocation density escapes from free boundaries and free surface. And the strength curve will be increased because more dislocation is keep this, if starvation, they are, will be go back. Uh, they will be uh, hardening increased. This uh, this uh, num this uh, alpha bit numbers corresponding to the different configurations from A to F because in the F only a, a few a few uh, junctions left in the pillars. So this where so it means. If no more dislocation is uh, sleep, it means it's quite go back to the perfect crystal, go back to elastic. So this very strong hard links. <coughs> we call the single arm dislocation soils operation and the go. But we, during the uh, during the compression, we also can the strain burst because some dislocation escape, some dislocation nucleation. We can strain burst during the. Uh, Stress curve, we call the simplest curves. They are <coughs> for the different uh, diameters. For 200 nanometers, we have two pin point with two pin point. For the uh, large diameter, for 600 nanodiameters, we have three pin point. They usually for, for stable single arm dislocation soils, there are two or three pin point in the uh, follow the. Uh, Sleep, uh, sleep plants in the crystals. This is, also they have weak, very dislo very, dis very weak dislocation between the each dislocated interactions. If you these two factors, we can give stable values for the dislocation evaluation. For the for the side effect of stable flow stress, for the power law exponent by experiment, usually this from zero point. 61 to minus 0 0.97. This is random numbers for the for the power law expo exponent. From our result, this 0 0.85. These numbers is the in the this range. This in the this range of the uh, values. They are quite reasonable. For the stable dislocation. Uh, uh, Dynamics uh, evaluation for early deformation stage, they are continuously decreased for the sur because surface annihilation of these locations. For the final uh, deformation stage, we, they are, we, we, they are, we, will be keep stable, continued operation of the stable SAS. The reason of that is that we can see the dislocation still evaluation and some new nucleation and some escape from free boundary. At the moment, we give another. We give the length scale. Length scale. We have the lambda is. Uh, we give the special uh, names. We call the stable soil length lambda is. What means lambda is? Is the maximum distance for the pin point to the surface to the free surface. If less than this lambda is, the this uh, the pin point will be will be escaped from free boundary. Less than this length, the dislocation, uh, the pinpoint will <coughs> difficult to escape from free surface. From we use lambda as over diameter of the pillars. We have stable lines. This from analytical prediction. This from DDD simulation. They almost uh, have constant values for the lambda s over uh, for the for the lambda s over diameter of the pillars. This stable soil is length normalized by the pillar diameter when dislocation density reached a stable values. <coughs> Next, we move to theoretical work. 
for the for the for the data loss density divided uh, increment divided by the divided the sort of move distance for the bulk materials we have this equations for the surface annihilation we have this equation for the general rate by single arm dislocations we have this equation for the small size of the pillars for the we put every equation in the same, in the same equations but the first two two terms dominated for the stable dislocation evaluation for the small pillars so if we have First, the two terms, if we want to get the maximum numbers, minimum number, uh, minimum values for the, uh, give the, uh, keep stable, we have the, these equations for the, de, uh, the increment of the density over increment of the sleep distance, we have, if less than zero, we have the lambda S over D. These this values, we have this almost uh, equal 0 0.32 is the, we call the this location stable. We have these values. We can evaluate the, uh, the st uh, statistic models. From these models, we can find the number of pinning point, how, much, how many number pinning point can keep stable dislocation densities from the sleep plans in the micropilers. For, for our result, usually we have numbers, uh, we have three numbers for the pinning point in the dislocation follow the sleep plans. We have an analytical prediction, also DDD simulation result. This dislocation density, stable dislocation densities, the, 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 12, the power 12 is the average meter squares. We have the 200 nanometers for, until 800 nanometers diameter. We have the same result between the analytical result prediction or DDD simulation. For the resolved shear stress, during the compression, we have resolved shear stress. Shear stress is tau zero, it's the initial shear stress, and the second term is the uh, based on the based for the uh, uh, second term is evaluated by the dislocation densities, and the last term for the as uh, single arm uh, size of dislocations. We can from this work we can give the result from DDD simulation is the red uh, rectangular and for the circle blue is analytical prediction and the black uh, demand is the experiment date. They are almost the uh, agreement for the analytical prediction, analytical prediction and the simulation for DDD model or experiment. This work we can give some short um, uh, solution about if the SAS dominated is usually the Diameter of the pillar is 200 to 1,000 nanometers. Less than this number, less than with small small diameters, we call this location starvation and a nucleation. Beyond these numbers, this location forest hardly more dislocation couldn't escape from because the size is bigger. So we can forest these locations. This uh, have this land scale for the model from a different mechanisms. Next, we're talking about the confined plasticity. For confined plastic models, we have the we have the pillars, no free boundaries. We have the we have the we have confined we have plastic we have confined plastic boundaries like a, like a nickel pillars. We use the aluminium two and the oxygen three use the confined for the pillar coatings. From this pillar, we have two magnetisms. One is the we call the repressive regions. These repressive regions it means. The, Include that it is effect about the trapping trapping dislocations. For the second part is we call the attractive reasons. Attractive reasons dislocation can be captured in the most region of the pillars. For these two magnetisms, we can evaluate the new dislocation uh, magnet uh, theory and the simulation work for the coating pillars. Because coating pillars are very useful for the industry if if you want to design a smaller device. For the coating pillars, we have a result that use the uh, solid curve, solid curve, this coating pillars, but the coating, coating pillars, no, no dislocation can escape from free, no free boundaries, no dislocation escape. They are going to the harder, going to the harder. But uh, for the 
uh, uh, we have used for free surface uh, pillars. Most of these locations will be escaped from free boundary. So the the value of the string curve, uh, string and string curve, will be lower than counting pillars. There are uncounting pillars. The counting pillars. This location will be evaluated in the pillars. There are many this 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 location lines for the. No uncounting pillars. This location will be escaped. There are only a few dislocation lines. They, they have different uh, configuration for dislocation evaluation. We have what is the dislocation density? We are interested in dislocation density. For the uncounting pillars, dislocation density will be reduced and uh, keep stable. As uh, I talked uh, uh, previously, for the uncount for the counting pillars, this most dislocation will be trapped in the pillars. So there are this density almost, uh, and also we have, we have another density we call mobile dislocation densities. Trapping dislocation, trapping dislocation and mobile dislocation, they are superposite, superposite together will be get the total dislocation densities in the coating pillars. This work, we can compare result with the crystalloplasticity model predicted also, as a uh, single arm dislocation model predicted, also simulation result, they have almost the constant result for three different uh, uh, different uh, analyzing result or uh, simulation result. What's the stress? For the, the for the serial stress, we also have the same numbers for the uncounting pillars. We have for the during the comparison, they have the yield stress yield stress for the. Counting pil uncounting pillars, the real stress curve is going to the stable, and this value is, the, for, for example, for 400 nanometers for three pillars, this, this work, this, is the, this is a stress, is the yield stress is 118 megapascal. From this work, we can get the coefficient Ks equal Z, equal one. For the counting pillars, it's the red line. The counting pillars, Yield, the first yield stress is 0, 2.5 megapascal. We have Ks equal 2 for the different uh, uh, operation stress. For the coating pillars, we have one term increased because they have bad stress. Back stress is during the coating pillars, we have back stress. If no coating, no back stress. So how, how can we get the back stress? <coughs> we have back stress is proportional to the number of tipping point or serial modules or back box vector over the diameter of, diameter of pillars. This proportional, we can use this uh, fixed, fixed number of the, uh, we can fix these numbers, we can get the uh, factor 0 0.7 is the, we can, this is the proportional, we can get these numbers, we can give the equal numbers. So zero, uh, this alpha dot, is the, we have different pillar uh, diameters, almost the constant of 0 0.7, also Ks almost constant equal to two for different diameter of pillars. So we have the equation, we have counted pillars, we have operation stress, SAS, we have the uh, initial stress or the second term and the third term for the SAS dominated. The last term we call the back stress. If we have, we can two magnesium, once, is the stress strain resistance. Some t this is for the if the only for the elastic you can increase as uh, for this for the for the average values this is for the plastic. Elastic plastic we can give the uh, like a strain burst. This the we can give the uh, strain and the strain curve. And also we have the uh, uh, resolved uh, serial stress. If we think how can give the more uh, experiment data or values in uh, uh, predicted, we have the lower bound and upper bound. For the lower bound of flow stress, we think we assume a single arm dislocation never ruptured. There will be lower bound because the dislocation in the pattern plastic, in the pattern continuous sleep, they have plastic, they have lower bound. For the upper bound, we assume the, the single arm dislocation failed once we sweep the sleep plan only once. This is the upper bound. Between the upper bound and the lower bound, they have 
typical simulation result just in the side. And for the upper bound and lower bound, we can more, we can um, accumulate it. We can uh, we can uh, get more ex uh, more result from reference papers. All result from experiment also from the uh, uh, theoretical result in the lower bound and in the lower bound and upper bound. We can predict it, the result for the um, small size pillars uh, during the compression or tension. <coughs> the, this result also some if the if the dislocation uh, attracted uh, in the interface of the uh, coating coating interface, there will be stress concentration. If stress concentration, there will be broken the coating uh, coating surface. How can broken coating surface should be stress concentration? We have the, this simulation work. We call the, use the stress criterion to broken the hoop stress, get them crack in the coating air in the coating surface. The next we're talking about the, um, circular loading for the mechanical annealing on the low amplitude circular loading in mega pilots. Why we do that? For the the most work is the monotonic loading. Use the compression or tension. The monotonic monotonic loading. We can see the more dislocations during the comp compression. We have the perfect crystal. No dislocations. We call this the starvation. But we need very high stress for the monotonic stress. We think about how to get the very uh, low stress. Also can is, can give the perfect stall. Can drive to the dislocation escape. So we have used the circular loading to. We can use circular loading, very low stress, we can drive this oxygen escape. This for loading, unloading, uh, tension, we can drive most dislocations escape from free, free, free surface. They are, this maximum is very low, but you can drive this location escape. Also, we can compare the result because they are dislocation pinpoint. We are be, for the monotonic loading, they are going to the direction, one direction. For the uh, circular loading, they can go reverse in reverse ball. They can go back and then they go back to the surface again. It means reverse ball in, uh, in a reverse ball movement of the panning point. From this work, we have two results. One for moni monotonic result, we have tension stress 2265 megapascal to drive this of the escape. For the Circular load, tension loading with only 140 megapascal, we also can drive this location escape because they are loading, unloading, circular loadings. And also we have uh, a sleeve re reversible uh, uh, density uh, increment. Okay, I understand time is limited. And we have the, we have the uh, theoretical uh, solutions. We can get the stress, sleep resistance, we can get this location velocity, we can give stress increment, we can update stress, strain, pilot deformation, and crystal orientation. For the small pilots, the dislocation annihilation. For large pilots, dislocation accumulated. So if we can predict it, what's the side for the critical side for the dislocation uh, uh, for the pilots? At the moment, we predict the around 440 uh, nanometers for the diameter of the pillars. For the experiment, uh, 380 nanometers from the quite uh, reasonable for the uh, theoretical work and the experiment. Okay, and I leave the summary here. I thank you for your attention for my talk. Thank you very much.